I thought I'd take you out on some evening fishing. It's in May now, where it's quite warm. And I want to show some of the active moving flies that I'm using. And in particular, the jiggy fly. The highest requested fly for me to do a pie and catch with. And here we are, out of the coast. Just a little session, trying to get a sea trout from quite a deep ledge. And uh, quite familiar to the first time I appeared really on YouTube. May, jiggy fly, deep edges, brings back memories. That was fun to be part of already back then. But, uh, so yeah, now it's a little bit of a return to the same kind of fishing. My favorite flies is this weighted flies. Uh, fished them in a loop. Uh, and there's a lot of movement in it, a lot of jigging. Uh, it's really effective now when the water is a little bit warmer. I've been making many styles of this fly during the years. It's a fun memory to still have <laughs> recorded those days. But here I have it tied on the RX curved shrimp, which works beautifully because I don't have to bend it. It naturally bends in a really nice way to make a jiggy fly. And to that, I have a really large bead. But we're gonna talk more about that, the tying part. Now it's time to get out here and fish. Conditions look great here, so hopefully we'll get into something. And that's the whole point of this video, right? Let's do this. Time to do the first cast of the evening. The weather is so stunning right now. As soon as it gets warmer, I just fish heavier flies. I don't feel like they need to I don't feel the, really the need for the line to sink when it's such shallow fishing that we do here. And this fly is about, yeah, from one gram to one and a half. You can even make the tungsten up to two grams easily. So it, it sinks quite well. And with a floating line, I can really make it drop. You can take a long pause. There is plenty of stones here. So I don't want to fish too deep. It's a risky place to lose flies. I know that since before. As a dropper fly, I tied on something that should be a good reference for how well this jiggy fly is, is working because this predator dubbing bait fish that I have as the other option for them produced really well, well lately. So the retrieve I, I do is like long pulls, then a long pause. I do a couple of fast ones, and then we'll make a longer drop, and bury like that. Make sure to have the rod tip close to the surface, so the tension on it is good. Did a little walk. We'll fish now in a little bit calmer water. Good chance for rising fish. Therefore, I'm using a dry fly. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Crazy jiggy fly. And I think I actually saw right where the bird flew past. I think I saw a rice. Have to wait until they pass. I think I saw it again, actually. So I present to my dry or die method is a freaking jiggy fly with a poor presentation <laughs> let's see if they take it <laughs> one and a half gram <laughs> of bead straight in the head <laughs> oh yeah yeah definitely fish there we get oh no must be a rock but it really looks like a fish but it's been up on the same spot many times now Looks really suspicious that, yeah, it's again. Must be some seaweed on top of a rock or something. 
still I'm taking no chances. I'm casting there for sure. I've been crazy schools of fishing evening before. Why not today? That was a fish. That was a rock card take. Oh my god. I did line slipped. That was a like a rock. Yeah, yeah, no. I missed it. Two takes. Woo! That was so solid. Totally messed up my jiggy fly. Probably was that one it took on. Fix this fast. Several times it looked like they've been rising over here. Yep, there it is. I was right. <laughs> they are rising over there. This can't be a big one. Doing some good head shakes, but not more than that. It's coming in pretty straight towards me. Now it's swimming around more like a sea trout. Before it did not behave like one. So these are the fellows that have been <laughs> nagging my fly, huh? Not a big one, but it's something. <laughs> A fish up in the surface. I need to mark that. Oh, it was right there. You think it was because I spooked it or? No, I really hold on to the line. Oh, there was another fish. That was not so spooked in the behavior either. I'm tempted to tilt up the camera angle in this direction. <laughs> but it would be so obvious where I am. But <laughs> it's just going nuts. <laughs> Did I lose it? No. Still on. Still on. <laughs> but I got so much luck. <laughs> okay, come into this angle here. It's a little bit nicer fish. Not huge, but... <laughs> ah, corner in. There we go. L may appear like it is on the jiggy fly, but it's hanging here. It was my goal to prove that this catches fish, and it does, but this predator dubbing bait fish is hard to beat. Could actually be 50. Yeah, it's uh, 49, 50, somewhere there. <laughs> that was a lame release. <laughs> Sorry, guys, for not making this video about the jiggy fly. I guess that's what happens when you deal with fish. They <laughs> don't always do what you want them to. But um, I have to do that another time when I actually catch fish on it. But instead, here I'm gonna tie the fly that I actually have the best fishing on in clear water. And for sure, the, the exactly this fly is the one I caught the most fish on this season. So I'm very excited to share it with you. And here we go, let's go back to the vise. So, a little quick disclaimer before we get to the fly tying. 
This is me on the day before uploading this video. I'm out shooting a little bit of a longer term project for the channel perhaps. And uh, it's about not let's see if we can put this down it's a little shaky. So it, the, the fact is probably that no matter how much I show in these videos about the surroundings of where I am, most people would have no idea where I am anyway. But there is a certain amount that do know and would recognize it. And I think it's kind of healthy to not show too much attention to a certain spot online. And uh, there I feel re responsive to take part in that don't don't overcrowd any certain area with with uh, giving inspiration and such I don't want to like show on certain like on a map this is where I am if it's a public water or so and with that said it's I try to not sh show too much about the area in the videos and more focus on the, the flies and the equipment and the, the bottom structure and so on because that's the truth in, in sea trout fishing as well. It's not like there is a magic spot where all the fish is. It's uh, a lot about matching the kind of bottom and the kind of food source that you find there to the, the weather conditions you have. And there is the, the truth of where you find those, those amounts of fish that we found sometimes in these videos. So, uh, but also it's like there is not only Gotland where you can fish for sea trout. There can maybe be some other place you can go to as well. If you want to come here, I, I'm sure you can just contact me and we can do some guided fishing. I can show you where I fish. The, it's uh, new places every day. If that wasn't the truth, it would be quickly a problem for me because I have new guests coming every day. And uh, if I would go to the same spot every day, would quickly be quite crowded there I can tell you so that's not how it is but this video was in fact quite hard to put together without showing too much it was only one camera and was moving all directions so it was kind of easy like kind of difficult to to not show and if some people would recognize where it is happy for you I don't care but uh, it's just that getting a spot that it gets too much attention and a lot of fi fishing pressure and people get angry at each other because it's so many people out fishing it maybe not really is because it's just that a small area that got a lot of attention and i i don't want to feed that too much but if you have any suggestions on how i should do this or how i should do a healthy approach to this i'm happy to hear your thoughts down below now <laughs> let's go and tie this fly I got some sweet underwater footage of the fly as well during the day. <laughs> 